Hello, this is uh, Jeffrey Fox, the instructor of the Big Data Applications and Analytics course, part of the Data Science Curriculum at Indiana University. And we're always we're now on to Lesson 7 of Unit 2. And we're going to describe the fourth paradigm or the change in the research model, or the <laughs> quite how much of a change is actually a little controversial. Some people think it's the same old um, research model, but uh, just slightly different emphasis, but never mind. This is part of the motivation for this course. Uh, it's certainly there is um, more emphasis on data than there used to be a few years ago. That has to be true. So here we have a, a, you know, a, a screenshot from a wired article, issue of uh, September 2008. And it has this dramatic title, The End of Science. And welcome to the petabyte age. Actually, we just explained we're really in the um, um, uh, zettabyte age. There's just petabytes per field, or up to maybe 100 petabytes in some fields. Uh, so, uh, so this, this, I think this particular article was. Um, very influential in bringing this idea to people's attention. And its title, although quite wrong, it is, I say, actually in some sense, the beginning of science done better. Not the end of science, but it, um, it uh, brought these things to people's attention. So we have these four paradigms of scientific research. Everybody agrees about theory, that's what Einstein or Invented with his equations, or Newton's invented, or the superstring theory is a theory. This is a way of thinking about the world with equations traditionally, uh, or maybe which can, and which told you what's going on. Then we always had experiment and observation, and that experiment and observation gave data, which came information, came knowledge. And for instance, Newton's based his theory on apples falling from trees, at least that's the claim. Um, so that's the second paradigm. So for a long time, until maybe 1990, people always identified two modes of research. Whether that, Then along came lots of computing. And that led to so-called computational science run on supercomputers, which added to this repertoire the ability to gain knowledge by simulating a theory. And that simulation would tell you maybe things that you could never see from experiments. And so that allowed you to, to get scientific insights of a new type. Now we have this so-called fourth paradigm. And what's somewhat controversial is whether the fourth paradigm is different really from the second paradigm. Because uh, like the Large Hadron Collider, it was always called experimental particle physics. Uh, but it's the world's biggest data in terms of science. And so is it the fourth paradigm or the second paradigm? Not so obvious. Uh, what's characteristic of the fourth paradigm is that you're, you're using the data to drive uh, the discovery or to drive the scientific inquiry, where traditionally you use theory and things like that. But actually, whatever you look at, you should probably be aware of the theory, because the theory will guide what you do. And it is wrong to think that uh, the data-driven approach uh, gets rid of theory. Like even Netflix, which is using purely data-driven approach and it's data science, consumer data science. It is um, act actually um, using, uh, in some sense, uh, if not theory, at least a thought, because they choose uh, which parameters to look at, or they want to look at uh, things connected to you, things connected to your family, and that counts because they know people, individuals, and families watch TV at the same time. And they know various categories that you're meant to look into. So that their um, so-called data-driven approach is, is actually guided by theoretical insight. There's this famous book from Microsoft on the fourth paradigm, a free book you can download. And uh, I recommend it. It's, um, it's again, whether it's method two or method four, is still pretty interesting. So.
Okay, here is the final slide in this uh, short uh, segment. And um, this fellow always looks pretty cheerful to me, scooting around in Silicon Valley. He, at the time, in two, which is probably, these things usually change. In 2008, he was heading Walmart Labs. And he was teaching a guest class. And he was addressing the famous Netflix challenge competition, which is trying to produce a better way of predicting uh, what people want to watch. And that uses machine learning, a nifty classification algorithm. And he had student teams, and he contrasts two teams. One, brilliant mathematicians came up with a much better algorithm. And team B used a very simple algorithm, but added more data. Uh, especially data about the types of movies from the Internet Movie Database. So this was actually what I told you about theory. The theory was either use the raw data or use the raw data plus another data. The team that used a better theory got the better answers. Well, he actually interprets it differently, that more data produces better algorithms. But actually, it's a contrast between thinking carefully, which says we really should add this uh, Type data to the data to the data we're looking at, uh, as opposed to doing better mathematics. So mathematics is not the same thing as theory. Theory needs real insight. So that's a reasonably important um, observation. Okay, thank you very much. The end of this lesson, Unit Two, Course Motivation, Lesson Seven.